Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Clean Technica TV. Just so you know, this is not a reaction video to the Cybertruck. This is already a full analysis video. Basically, in this video, we compare the Tesla Cybertruck to other pickup trucks, to the Ford F-150, and other off-road vehicles. I actually had a lot of time to look all that stuff up and put it all together so that you guys might have some extra context to un better understand the Tesla Cybertruck. So, first of all, pickup trucks. There are basically three categories, a half ton, a three quarter ton, and a one ton category. Half ton, that's the Ford F-150, um, three quarters, that's uh, the F-250, and the f one ton is the F-350. So, in addition to that, about pickup trucks, there is something you should know. First of all, there are three bed lengths. There is a five and a half, feet. There is a six and a half feet and a eight feet bed. The Tesla Cybertruck has a 6.5 feet bed. Um, then in addition that, to that, pickup trucks, for the cabin where the people sit, there's also three variants. When it comes to Ford, they have a regular uh, cab, a super cab, and a super crew cab. So the only difference is basically that with the super crew cab is that there are two doors on both sides uh, for so that everyone can easily get in. That's also what the Tesla Cybertruck has. So basically when I say we're going to be comparing the Tesla Cybertruck to the Ford F-150, I mean the Ford F-150 that has also a 6.5 feet bed and also Super Crew where multiple, where that has four doors basically. In any case, enjoy the video. There's, enjoy the graphs. I hope it helps you guys. Alright, so the presentation itself was not very long, but there was definitely a lot of information packed in there that we are not used to seeing because, well, let's face it, so far we've had SUVs, uh, sedans, and not pickups, which is an entirely different class, all kinds of different specs that we are not used to seeing, and it just takes a while to just get that all ready and in one line so you can easily compare it. So I'm actually going to do something unusual, I'm going to start with the conclusion, and that is that it is not the perfect pickup, not for every situation. It, it, it will fit for a lot of situations, but not all of them. There are some pickup truck models that are cheaper and can do specific things that the Tesla pickup will not be able to do for the same price. On the other hand, the Tesla pickup, the Tesla Cybertruck, might actually be the absolute best off-road vehicle. Almost, very close. And that is definitely something that it shines in and we will definitely compare it to other vehicles and you'll see exactly what I mean. Price. Now, this is one of the hardest things to pin down. Uh, so basically the Ford F-150, which would be the, to be more specific, the Ford F-150 XL, starts only at $28,500. So you'd think, hey, that's a lot cheaper, right? Well, here's the thing. The average selling price of a pickup truck in the US is somewhere between forty-four and forty-eight thousand dollars. <laughs> That's a huge difference, obviously. Now, basically for a usable truck, you're at least gonna have to add like four to five thousand dollars in accessories, uh, engine upgrades, and much more. And that's basically how you get at least to already to like thirty-eight thousand dollars. Options that let you have more passengers or even just something to cover the bed with is going to all cost you extra. With the Cybertruck, all those prices are already, all those accessories are already included in the price. And that's not obviously not the case for Ford. So it's really hard to pin down exactly a real apples to apples comparison because some people might want these options, some people might not. And you basically get a range. So I think it's, I think the best thing to do is to just compare the Tesla Cybertruck to the approximate 44,000 grand, um, average selling price of a pickup truck. Now, here's the thing. Price is just something that you need to cross off a list and that's it because it is definitely not the most important thing because this pickup truck is not just gonna be used to pick things up with. Let's, let's, uh, let's do the tug of war video. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it was uphill. 
Now, um, from the presentation, it may seem like the pickup truck, like the Cybertruck, is a smackdown to the F-150 and half-ton trucks. But it's a bit more complicated than that. It really isn't. The presentation may slightly be making things look better, rosier than it actually is. Now, before we get into this, I want to present to you a fellow Clean Technica reader and some of the comments that he has posted about the Cybertruck. I have a small farm slash ranch. We do more with fewer and fewer people, so the equipment has to do more. So the size of the equipment just keeps getting bigger. I could go on, but you get the picture. One of my tractors weighs 14,000 pounds. My equipment trailer, a gooseneck, weighs 6 pounds, so that is 20 pounds. A half-ton truck just doesn't have the heft to handle a load like that. Everything has to be much heavier duty. So my one-ton truck weighs more than my half-ton truck. It's also much bigger with a full 8-inch bed. This is needed because I have to carry tools and a large diesel tank for fueling my tractors. It's a real pain to drive the one-ton for anything but work. Just trying to park it is a nightmare. I often take up four parking spaces. This just pisses people off, but there is nothing I can do about it. So I have a half-ton truck, which I use for most tasks. I have a Subaru, which I usually drive unless I actually need a truck. But it's expensive to keep three vehicles. So I will buy Elon's electric truck, even if it only replaces my half-ton. But it would save a lot more money if I could replace the one-ton. You would not believe what this thing costs in fuel and repairs. I dream of using my own solar power for all my vehicles and tractors. My fuel bills run into the tens of thousands every year, not to mention repair bills. Now, does the pickup truck live up to James's wet dreams? Well, I haven't talked to him yet, but I am afraid it probably does not. Here, let me go into the numbers for you. So let me explain what we see here. Obviously with a Tesla, you, we have three models, every kind of add-on is already included in the price, nothing surprising here. And as you can see, the top tier long range beats the Ford F-150. However, the towing capacity and payload capacity for the F-150 that you see here is a bit deceptive. Because look at the end, the price varies between $28,000 and $70,000 which is enormous, a huge gap. So what's going on? The thing is the F-150 is so customizable, there are so many different options that it's very difficult to see and really compare the towing and payload capacity to any of the Tesla models. However, only the absolute best model, and there's like only one or two of them that actually have that towing and payload capacity. So I saw this website, it's really useful. Take a look. What we have here are the different payload capacities of the different versions of the F-150. And while obviously the which cab you have, whether it's a regular cab, super cab, or super crew matters, what matters most of all is whether it's a 4x2 and which engine. In the previous chart, we saw that the Ford F-150 had a payload capacity of above 3,000 pounds. So it was a 3,270. But in this chart, we don't see 3,270 anywhere right now. And that's because this is a 3.3 liter engine. Now, if you go down, you see 2.7, 5 liter, and 3.5, a more ecological one. And most of these numbers range in the high 1,700s. And then as you go down, they slowly increase to, they cross 2,000 pounds, and eventually also you start seeing a few that go above 3,000 pounds. But there are not that many that go above 3,000 pounds. We can literally count them pretty quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's literally it. Out of like 50 different options, only six go above the 3,000 pound threshold. So for an, to say that an F-150 can has a payload capacity of 3,000 pounds or more is fairly deceptive and unrealistic. Only very specific models and very specific configurations will actually have a payload capacity that matches the one of the Tesla Cybertruck. So the Tesla Cybertruck top tier model beats the F-150 in every possible way, for sure. Now, just for fun, 
let me add the F-250 and F-350 to compare it with. And then the Cybertruck suddenly starts looking less great. Add to that the fact that the starting price for the F-250 is $34,000 and the starting price for the F-350 is only $35,000, it becomes apparent that the Tesla Cybertruck is not king when it comes to towing capacity or payload capacity. Now, to be fair, uh, those starting prices are obviously not very fair. As we said, the average selling price is 44,000. So again, even the F-250 and F-350, they, you still need to add some extra options for to be able to meet your demand in payload and weight. I just listed the prices for the F-150 to F-350 XL, not the XLT, not the Lariat and definitely not the Limited, which, which raises the price astronomically. So basically, just to quickly summarize this, the Cybertruck at, top, at the top price absolutely beats the F-150, no problem. But it doesn't beat the F-150 at every price point. So it might not fit all situations. It really depends how much towing capability someone really needs. Now, obviously, to be fair, we really need to add the fact that cost of ownership will probably still be a lot lower for the Tesla Cybertruck. Because, as we mentioned, repairs, way cheaper. Gas, obviously, electricity is, again, way cheaper, especially if you have solar panels. And, you know, one thing that you usually have with that comes with a farm is a barn. And on a, what do you have on your barn? A lot of space on a roof for solar panels. Now, the Cybertruck, there are obviously no numbers for this, but indications at least show that it's probably not the best vehicle for towing something long distance. Obviously, the range is going to be an issue here. That's one of the reasons that SUVs have such big gas tanks, sometimes even a second tank for fuel. So long haul, maybe not so useful, but at a farm where you have a big farm, a big barn, a big barn roof that you can fill with solar panels, then it's absolutely perfect for everyday usage on the farm. You charge it at night, you wake up, you have a full battery, you get to work, it's perfect. Back and forth, back and forth, no problem at all. It might actually be ideal. Now, off-road, this is where it gets really a lot more exciting than just pickups because um, being able to go off-road is one of the most exciting aspects of the Cybertruck. Now, of course, you saw this image with camping in the Cybertruck. That's pretty cool. I mean, people already love camping in their Model S, X, and 3s and be able to look at the stars at night. But the Cybertruck is actually built for it. But th those are actually just gimmicks because for actual functionality off-road, if you really need to do it for work or all kinds of things, there is almost no better choice than the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, here on the spec sheet, you see approach, the departure, and the ground clearance. So as you can see, with ground clearance, there is one that beats the Tesla Cybertruck, the Mercedes-Benz. And the next one is multiple inches down the Ford F-150 Raptor. But when you look at the actual standard Ford F-150, it only has a 9.3 inch ground clear clearance. And this list this did, I didn't just take random pickups and SUVs to compare. These, except for the F-150, are some of the best off-road vehicles out there. The Tesla Cybertruck is definitely no slouch. And as I'll explain later, the, by ground clearance, the, the Tesla Cybertruck actually wins completely. But if you actually order all of these by approach, you get this image. Suddenly, Tesla is no longer second, but fifth. That is not bad. That is really, really good. If you take all of the best off-road vehicles and Tesla Cybertruck on their first attempt managed to get the fifth best one, and actually it's fourth, I'll explain why in a moment, then that's amazing. A 35 degree approach angle is great. Now the departure angle of 28 is still quite great compared to the competition, but obviously there is room for improvement. But on the whole, this is definitely a a car that you can easily, easily take off-road anywhere and not have to worry. So in other words, there's basically only one car that beats the Tesla Cybertruck at off-roading, 
but I don't think it's really fair to compare a car that costs $39,000 with a car that costs $250,000. Yeah, in case it wasn't clear, that's the Mercedes-Benz. So basically, I think the car is gonna sell really, really well, but not at first. And that's basically the title of the video, right? Now, let me explain how I came to this conclusion. Here's the thing, some people don't like the design, um, but that's something that will grow on you. I'm sure it is. Uh, I think in some ways, Tesla is actually taking a book, taking a page out of Apple's book. Uh, Steve Jobs once said, we are making devices that people don't even know they want yet. And that's exactly what's happening here. A lot of people, they don't know yet that they want the Cybertruck, but they will. I mean, in my initial reaction, I also didn't like it. But within the half an hour presentation, the design really grew on me and even I want one now, which I really would never ever have expected. I mean, personally, I'm in Europe. I The only reason I'm probably gonna get a Model 3 or Model Y, not a pickup truck, is because I'm gonna have a really hard time parking and driving it on the narrow streets here in Europe. But other than that, I love it. it it's great, it's so functional. First of all, it also has the air suspension that can go up and down. It's a pickup truck, but really it competes with any kind of off-road vehicle you can think of, even SUVs. Uh, there are also a lot of people in the US, Tesla fans, <clears throat> who might have liked the design and thought, I have enough space, why not buy it? One final prediction. Sure? Yeah. Oh my fucking God. When the glass broke, a lot of people were like, wait, that's not good. That's, you know, that means it's not bulletproof. It's not that strong. Uh, but the reality of the situation is, first of all, it doesn't matter because, you know, c replacing a, a window instead of the door is going to be way cheaper and way simpler. And if the glass can withstand already a lot, that's great. In, for most situations, it will be sufficient. What Tesla was demonstrating was pretty crazy, but here is a prediction and <laughs> this is, a gut feeling from experience. Having had that failure on stage means that by the time they launch, it'll be 10 times stronger and it will be able to survive that exact same demo. They will improve it because Tesla does not accept failures like that. And that is it for this episode. First of all, I just want you guys to know I made this entire video, including the research within just a little bit over 12 hours. This was a bit of a challenge see if this is even possible so if anything quality wise is not as you expect well I don't know why I hope you guys enjoyed it though I hope this information was helpful for you to better understand what the cyber truck really is and how successful it will be other than that have a wonderful day till next time <laughs>